afternoon. I'm Elizabeth Mueller, Executive Director for Ironwood Cancer and Research Centers. Today, I would like to introduce Dr. Edgar Hernandez. Dr. Hernandez is a highly educated and esteemed breast surgeon at Ironwood Cancer and Research Centers. To add to his already distinguished career, Dr. Hernandez has written a book, On the Border of a Dream, chronicling his personal journey from a childhood in Mexico to immigration into the United States. He not only tells us a very compelling tale of his childhood experiences, but also intertwines a life lesson of compassion and service. Dr. Hernandez. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Thank you. I think that you probably would like to know why did I write this book? And you asked me earlier, you're a very busy surgeon. Why would you have time to do this? Well, it's very compelling to me to leave something for my grandchildren. To be exact, six granddaughters. I want to leave something like an inspirational guide for them. In this day and age, there's so many turmoil and confusions in children and adolescents, and I thought this would be a very excellent guide for them in the future, since as you know, we can't live forever. So I want to leave a legacy of something that they can remember and guide themselves when there's turmoils in life and they don't know really what to do. They're confused. I think my book is a guide to them because in, as a young child, there's a lot of roads that come towards them in life. One is a road for disaster, doomsday, that you mean nothing in society. And the other road is to be successful and mean something that you count in society, that you've some done, done something great. And so by looking at my book, I think that they'll see the spirit of a dream of a child. And as you know, my book basically starts with a story that is dialogue by a child's brain, child's mind, that expresses all the feelings that have occurred from the time I can remember, a early memory of five years of age. And it was at the seven and a half years of my life that I started looking as to what I wanted to do in life. I felt I want to be an American surgeon. My half-brother that came to the, uh, Mexico, to my small uh, town in, Mex in southern Mexico, uh, was already here. He had immigrated in 1955. He came over to visit me and I met him for the first time when I was seven and a half years old. And I saw a figure, a real figure, a super figure, a real man of stature, of interest, that intrigued me so much. And he was in the United States of America. And I thought he would bring me up to the United States, but because of financial reasons I did not come in. But guess what? When my father passed away, that's the first thing he thought about, is I want to bring Edgar Hernandez to the United States of America, which is my dream come true. And obviously, you know, there were obstacles with immigration, lack of finances, lack of documents. All these obstacles that occurred, none of those obstacles got in the way of success. And so, perseverance, hard work. I was managed to come into to the United States in 1959, I was here, eight and a half months, I was here legally. I was almost deported on two occasions. Very intriguing that two immigration officers, basically I was face to face within inches, but guess what? They let me go. And to this day and time, and when I talk about this, I still don't know why these two immigration officers had every opportunity to deport me while I was here illegally. But I think that there was a flash in their life of 30, 40 seconds as, they, as we were staring each other in the eye, our eyes locked with each other, and they let me go. I think they let me go for a good reason. I don't know. But boy, am I glad that they did because mm -hmm. I'm here, and I think we've done something in our society. Then I went back to Nogales to immigrate legally because we could no longer sustain the fear of deportation, the separation that my that would occur between my brother and I here in Phoenix would be devastating. So he decided we go back to Nogales, then I immigrated legally, but there was another obstacle. I spent 10 and a half months in Nogales, Arizona, because we were insufficient again with documents, finances. So at that time, my brother Miguel made a decision based on the following. I could not come back to the United States illegally. 
I could not go back to southern Mexico because my mother was basically barely able to feed the rest, the rest of the children. So there's only one choice for me to stay in Nogales, Arizona, and my brother could sell charisma in the stock market. So we met this waitress at a restaurant where we had lunch. He cut a deal with her, and I was able to stay with her for ten and a half months. I lived with her ten and a half months till we got our papers. As my brother traveled from Phoenix to Nogales to bring me reinforcements and money, and finally I came to the United States of America as a legal resident, one step away from citizenship. And I've been here ever since. And the whole idea surrounding me coming out here rolled around one thing is to bring my mother and the rest of the children. And we achieved that in 1968. So we came from a group of community of a family togetherness completely transported to the United States of America, the country that gave me all the life that I have. And I hope that throughout the years I have accomplished something that my grandchildren, when read, they read this book, they will know that all those efforts were certainly worth it. And I agree that they will certainly look at that when they're older and they'll find it. But anyway, that is my story, Elizabeth. That's wonderful. Even though you came from humble beginnings, you've never forgotten humanitarian efforts. Do you want to comment on that? Well, you know, Elizabeth, everybody gives something back, as you know. One of the things that I promised many, many years ago when I was in medical school, that I would give something to the community. And so during the first years of my practice, up to 1996, I did multiple missions in Mexico to go teach Mexicans, surgeons that are talented, technically highly skilled, but the, the technology was lacking. Mm -hmm. So with generous contributions from hospital, private individuals, we're able to do missions, in fact, probably about six or seven total. And we actually exercise a discipline of taking a team of doctors and nurses, and we basically changed the modality and the way they did things, and the great benefits that the surgeons that I helped train have said to me for year, year after year, even currently I keep in touch with them. What a great opportunity to make a change in the way our patients do. And that was when I was doing general surgery. I was actually uh, teaching how to do laparoscopic surgery. And so it was a great event of my life. And so I promised I would do that, and I kept my promise. And I was very, very happy to be able to do that. Thank you for reminding me of that, because I've been sort of busy in my practice with many things in life, and I haven't done any missions, but I do remember doing all those things. And, well, Dr. Hernandez's book is available on, on Amazon, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.